I'd like to introduce the next speaker, Mr. Akpinar, who will be talking about thin form factor super multi-view head-up display system. Uh, and since January of last year, he's been a PhD student at the Laboratory of Signal Processing at Tampere University of Technology. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Uur Akpunar, and I'm from Tampere University. Uh, today, my topic is Team Form Factor Super Multi-View Head-Up Display System. So uh, Head-Up Display is a semi-transparent uh, display technology which uh, shows the necessary information to the viewer, in this case, the driver of the car, uh, at some distance without changing their uh, gaze from the actual uh, viewpoint, in this case, the road when they are driving. Uh, we can divide this setup uh, into, into two types. Uh, in, in the first case, it's the virtual uh, pro image projection head-up display. And the second one is the direct projection head-up display. The difference is that in the virtual one, they show the uh, image content uh, at about two meters away from the driver, like you can think in front of uh, the front bumper of the car. And at the direct projection uh, head-up display, they just show the content around the windshield. So the problems with the existing techniques are for the virtual uh, projection display, the idea is uh, good, but uh, the commercially available ones usually uh, utilize this relay optics, uh, which, which are bulky, uh, because this optical path is, is long to, to create the uh, image at some depth. Uh, and also for the direct projection, since uh, although they have uh, thin form factor, uh, they still, you still need to change your uh, accommodation and emergence uh, between the road and the windshield because windshield is still very close to you compared to the road. So what we propose here is to, uh, is to create some compact, affordable, and virtual head-up display setup uh, that is able to show images at typical head-up display uh, distance, like around 2, 2.5 meters, uh, which can be seen here. So, uh, in tip uh, as typical head-up display setups, uh, we use a combiner, which in this case it's the windshield of the, uh, of the car, and some image pro projection unit, uh, and the total distance, like uh, because of the semi-transparency of the combiner, uh, this display appears here, so the, view, uh, the distance between the viewer and the virtual display is uh, viewing distance. And the virtual image is uh, appeared somewhere here. As the image projection unit, we utilize the super multi-view display, uh, which consists of the conventional 2D display plane and the lenticular uh, sheet, which is a 1D cylindrical uh, lens array that acts like a uh, lens in the horizontal direction and uh, glass as in the vertical direction. So a typical uh, thickness form factor of this uh, display is around five centimeters, like uh, two, three centimeters, which is quite uh, thin in the head-up display setup. So here you can see our uh, demonstrator. You can see this, this, the windshield and the 2, 2D plane display, uh, 2D display plane, uh, which we utilize Surface Pro 3. And you can also see this lenticular sheet. And here, uh, the image is, uh, it's the, this is the uh, multiplexed image that we created. And the final virtual image is somewhere around the display plane here. If you go deeper into the design parameters, we can start uh, by two-plane parameterization, starting from uh, denoting the lenticular sheet with T-plane and uh, 2D display with Y-plane. So ideally, each, each lens here in this uh, lenticular plane focuses this display, uh, uh, this pixels of this display at the weaving plane, so-called weaving plane where the weaver is located. So, so that the image is seen sharp. Uh, and as you can see, like most of you uh, know it already, uh, the, the pixels behind each lens uh, focuses at some, uh, some arbitrary point, which is called the weave number, uh, weave. So they create some special texture information uh, at that sp uh, specific location. So in this case, the sampling rate of this lenticular 
uh, so-called land speech, uh, defines the spatial uh, resolution of the setup. And similarly, the, uh, the pixel pitch of the 2D display uh, de decides the uh, viewing pitch of the setup. Because like each pixel is directed to adjacent, as you can see here, uh, adjacent views. Uh, and since we didn't utilize any physical barrier, so one pixel here uh, can go either this uh, primary lens and this secondary adjacent lens. So these uh, views are exactly the same of each other. So you can see that there is a periodicity between the, those uh, areas. So one period, uh, we, we assume that the viewer is located within the one period. It's uh, he, or not she, uh, he or she is not going to uh, go out of this IBUX. So we uh, denote this as IBUX. Uh, here are the design parameters. As you can see, this 2D display is not that uh, uh, very advanced display. It's commercially available, uh, around 100 micrometers you can find nowadays. Uh, so it's a basic 2D display. And the viewer is assumed to be located 90 centimeters from the, uh, view, from the display. And the resulting quality factors are the following. The IBUX is 33 centimeters, which is quite uh, satisfactory for the head-up display application. Assuming that the viewer is not going to move a lot, it's something like this. And the, the view pitch is 4.1 millimeter. This is especially important. This is uh, what Super Multi View is uh, designed for, uh, to, to make the uh, view pitch smaller than the uh, average eye pupil. Here we assume that the average eye pupil is uh, 5 millimeters. Uh, so that the transition when the viewer moves in this, uh, like in the lateral movement, a transition will be smooth. So you will observe the smooth motion parallax. And so in this IBUX, the total number of view is uh, 82. We, uh, each view has the resolution of 240 by 160. And of course, this resolution is uh, based on this slanted lens arrangement, well-known slanted lens arrangement. Uh, because if you use lenticular uh, sheet, if you don't use any slanted arrangement, uh, you don't lose any uh, pixels in the, in the vertical uh, direction, but in the horizontal direction, you divide your pixels between the angles and the, and the spatial samples. Uh, so the spatial resolution of the, the, at the horizontal dimension will be very low. Uh, that's why we have to use this slanted arrangement. But you can, basically the idea is uh, based on these stripes with the uh, subpixel arrangement, uh, those subpixels within this slanted line, uh, center of projection of each lens, uh, correspond to the same uh, viewpoint. So you can combine those pixels uh, to create that special one, one, one special pixel from that uh, specific point of view. But you can combine them either like this. In this case, you will lose. Uh, vertical resolution by three, and you will uh, gain 1.5 times the uh, horizontal resolution. So the final resolution will be 480 by 80. But in our design, uh, to create more even resolution, uh, we utilized uh, so-called P6, uh, that you lose six uh, factor of resolution from the vertical, and you gain three from the horizontal so that the resolution will be more even between the vertical and horizontal dimensions. But of course, this resolution is valid uh, within the so-called display depth of field. Uh, this is actually important. So if we uh, color code these special samples, uh, like each, each pixels of the special samples with the same color, and if we denote this, uh, axis, the coordinates of y-axis with respect to the, uh, each lens, corresponding to each lens. So this is y0, this is y0 also. Uh, we can end up with this sampling grid uh, in the spatial domain. Uh, so the sampling rate in the uh, y-plane depends on the pixels samples, and the t is the, uh, it depends on the lens pitch, as you can see. 
and each color here uh, represents one view image. So this slant uh, comes from this idea that uh, those pixels, they merge in this uh, weaving plane at some specific location. So the, uh, the sampling is sheared uh, a bit. So the, the amount of shear can be uh, obtained from uh, lens thickness and the weaving distance. If you go to the uh, Fourier domain, we can see that the, uh, this region, in, in that region, like this is the bandwidth of the display, so uh, in that region, dark gray region, uh, we can see that we can use the, uh, the display with full resolution. And when we go out of this region, uh, we can see that this line uh, cuts the special samples uh, at here. So we need to decrease the resolution after, uh, in order to uh, prevent the aliasing effects. In our uh, display, in our prototype, the Z max, the maximum distance of this uh, display depth of field is 55 centimeters uh, from the lens plane, uh, which is in total, it, uh, we assume that this is 90 centimeters, so in total it's uh, 1.45. So, uh, meters from the viewer. So with full resolution, we can show up to uh, 1.45 meters. Uh, another issue with the super multi-view display to be considered is the crosstalk, because uh, especially for us, our viewing uh, pitch is very small, so the views are very uh, near each other. So any, uh, especially with any uh, misalignments, uh, we'll create some uh, crosstalk effects. So in the experiments, we also go through those uh, crosstalks that needs to be addressed then. So the experiments about the resolution, first we tried, uh, we wrote some sinusoidal pattern, 3D sinusoidal pattern, uh, slanted, uh, within the depth of field, so 1.45 meters. And we show the images at full resolution. Uh, the, 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 the sampling rate of this uh, sinusoidal pattern at full resolution, it can still resolve. And half of the, that full resolution, you can see more clearly. Uh, when it goes out of this uh, depth of field, around three meters, for instance, uh, the sampling rate defined at the three meters, it can still uh, show the content. But if we go to the maximum resolution of this uh, display, uh, three meters, we can see clearly the aliasing. So we need to, if you, if you want to show the content uh, at three meters, we need to decrease the resolution. And for the crosstalk, uh, the measurement is done by using uh, a, a rig, a camera rig at the weaving plane. And we show one view at a time, and uh, we measure the intensity views at different uh, viewpoints of one view. You can see this is 46th view uh, distributed along, along different view positions. Uh, so ideally, it should be like a peak, but uh, we observe this Gaussian curve. Uh, so if you define the crosstalk as the a ratio between the intended view uh, to the total uh, intensity of all the views at that specific position, the uh, amount of crosstalk is 37.5%. So here is a demonstration I can show. There's some video from US. And we can see that the image is uh, moving relatively with the display, so we can say that the uh, image is formed around the display plane. Uh, the windshield. And Another demonstration for smooth motion parallax. We don't see any jumps. There is a slight uh, 
uh, changes here due to the uh, misalignment of this lens array. That was like in the, because this is only demonstrator, uh, the lens array is not perfectly uh, flat, so there are some skews which can be observed like this, but otherwise there is no jump within the high box. Okay, that's it, so thank you.